very peaceful. There's no sound at all. Just the waves crashing onto the shore. That's all I wanted to hear. I didn't want to hear anything else. I wanted to come back here anyway, but Jonah gave me that added incentive. Oh, you can breathe here. There's space. Space. But try and imagine this as a blank canvas, if you will, because uh, all this, all this furniture, like it or not, I, I tend to like it, but some don't, won't be here because it belongs to the current occupier. Okay, so it's lovely, isn't it? Beautiful, all right? So, we've just seen the master bedroom, which is the biggest bedroom out of the two. Now I'll show you both the other bedroom, which is a bit smaller, so you guys will have to fight it out between yourselves as to who's gonna get what um, one, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, we don't need a spare bedroom. We're gonna sleep in the same bed. Right! Right, like, right, okay, that's, that's, that's fine. I mean, each and everyone's their own, that's, that's, that's all right. I shouldn't be so presumptuous, should I? I, I had a couple of uh, gay, poof, gay guys uh, around here last week that I was showing uh, uh, one of the free bedrooms to, actually. Apparently, you gay guys like a lot of space, don't you? So, they wanted to go for the free. Yeah, we'll take it. Right, okay, well, let's go then, and, and, and we can sign the contract, okay? Right. <coughs> Around the world in 180 days is what it was supposed to be. Finishing up in India for spiritual revelations. I never took into account that as a single man your plans could potentially be sidetracked. Jonah wanted me to come back here and visit once more. And that visit turned into a realization that we wanted to spend more time together. So to save some money, we doubled up on rent and moved in. Not exactly protocol and usually the biggest recipe for disaster, but we were only expecting a short-lived romance. And our expectations turned out to be spot on. Something I said? No, of course not. Then... <laughs> um, look, uh, it just feels a bit weird tonight. Sorry. Uh, it's nothing to do with you. It's just... Uh, it's just this whole getting to know each other thing. I, I, I want to get to know you and all that, but... <sighs> it just feels a bit weird tonight. This whole huggy, huggy, cosy slippers kind what? of thing. Yeah, I know. Um, I just don't want it to go stale, you know, before we know it. I'm, 
I'm gonna go next door. Good night. Good night. That was the first night I began to feel a bit peculiar. In more ways than one. A little panicky, a little short of breath. I just put it down to not knowing where this relationship was going. Suddenly I'd become very philosophical. I didn't know what I was doing anymore. I started to doubt the reason for coming back to Australia. Why did I do that for a casual shag? I could have been on my way around to see the rest of the world, discovering my inner being and getting stupidly stoned with a load of my ancestors down in the Ganges. Either way, I was getting a bit soft, a bit more dependent, and that wasn't like me. At the time, I didn't like it. It's only now, looking back, I'm glad I had that chance. I felt it momentarily. It was in the grasp of my hands. He could have been the one. And I'm glad I came back. I could feel him breathing on me, caressing me without touching me. I knew he was watching over me. It was comforting, reassuring. As cheesy as it sounds, all I needed was the sound of those waves and his presence. He said he'd never been in love before. Who was I to question that? In hindsight, I don't think I'd really well and truly experienced it. Fleeting moments, perhaps. I guess it wasn't too hard to digest, considering he was still fairly young. In this day and age, it often seems inconceivable that most of us will actually get to taste all of the fruits. So many expectations, I suppose. So many boxes that need to be ticked. Why do people need so much? After our initial anxiety fueled happy family setup, I started just to relax and not expect anything. Maybe it helped not to feel 100% at home over there. Kind of gave me that edge. I liked him, but I don't think I truly cared whether it worked out or not because I had another life back home. These feelings were very likely contributing factors towards the bond I'd started to feel for him. Maybe love does develop when you're a bit aloof. Without sounding facetious, maybe things do start to happen when one doesn't give a shit. <laughs> Whatever happened along the line, I'm still glad I went back. Even though there was still a whole load of stoned Indians awaiting my imminent arrival back in my parents' homeland. Oh well, there's still plenty of time, after all. They do believe in reincarnation. I, I had started to really enjoy his innocence and his lack of know-how. He wasn't the brightest bulb in the pack, but his sincerity and the fact that there wasn't a malicious bone in his body were the most strangely attractive and sexiest qualities about him. He was like no other I'd met in the UK. And they say Australians are racist. Not this one. 
We could have gone there, I think. It could have been. I'd been travelling around the clock with this bloody aneurysm. <laughs> Apparently the doctors were stunned that it hadn't burst on any of my around-the-world excursions prior to arriving back in Australia. So maybe I have someone to thank for this, for this last minute opportunity to have shared my life, <laughs> albeit short, with someone I'd started to love. And as for Jonah, if he's experienced it once, well, there's no reason why he can't again. Every time I think of you, I smile.